guys, welcome back to Kitchers 2 Worship Service Online. I'm so glad you're here today. I'm excited for our service. I hope you guys are too. Well, if you need to grab a drink or use the bathroom, please pause the video. If not, let's get started with prayer. So let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this day. Help us, our God, to worship you, to focus on you, God. We need reminders each week, Lord, and every day, Lord God, that you are God, that you are in control of everything, Lord, that every day may seem the same, Lord God, but may your spirit fill us, renew us, remind us that you are here with us. And as kids, two kids are watching and learning, God, and reading and studying your word, God, may you fill them, may you empower them and strengthen them, that you are truly real and you are in control of everything in this world and even in our own lives and in our families we thank you we pray all this in jesus name amen amen well let's stand up where you are and let's get ready for worship hey kids too we're so glad you guys are here um, together to worship with us uh, if you have someone next to you tell them hey glad you're here if you have your parents or your siblings say i love you mom love you dad love you brother love you sister if you're by yourself go ahead and give yourself a high five or a pat on the back maybe pat on the back so good that you're here oh, i love myself <laughs> just kidding anyway so glad you guys are here and let's get started
All right, it's time for offering. So let's take it out from a chair, backpack, Bible, from your parent maybe, wherever it may be. So remember, you got your offering, two hands in respect. You can say a small prayer before you pull it in. So let's start.
Dear God, thank you for this wonderful Sunday and um, where we can all gather together through online. And I pray for this pandemic to get better so we can all gather together at church and worship you. Um, I hope this offering goes to and uh, goes to the people in need and glorifies you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you, Jaden, for your offering prayer. Uh, please send out an offering prayer. We are in need of many. So sixth graders, come volunteer. Or I'll ask you online through cacao or email. So we are in need of them. I hope you guys can send some. Also, guys, today we will not have Zoom. We'll take a break from Zoom today. Hope you guys take a rest from your eyes and just, you know, from being on the computer every day. So let it be a day of rest. That's what God calls it, the Sabbath day. So I hope you guys enjoyed today um, and just resting in His love. And also, guys, uh, this coming Saturday, we will have our Fall Festival Zoom. So please join us at 6 o'clock. Teachers have prepared few of our teachers have prepared a really fun games um, online through Zoom. And we're going to have worship and it's just going to be a great time. You know, wear a costume or create a costume, be creative, or if, you, if not, just join us. Either way is great. We just want to see you guys there. Also, guys, um, take a photo of your costume. It's great to see you guys. Um, in on zoom, but we also want a photo of it so that when I gather them all I have few of them already But when I gather them all it'll be fun to post it on our service and you can guess what each person is So that'll be really fun and our even our teachers will join us So please join us and I hope to see you guys there on Saturday Also guys, let's continue reading our daily reading plan. This is so important guys I'll be sending out your November one so you'll probably get that at the end of the week, probably on Saturday, so October 31st. So uh, let me know if you haven't gotten it by then, and I will make sure you'll get it. And I just sent out some fall crafts for you guys, so you shall have that. Either you received it already or in the beginning of um, this coming week, which probably be Monday or Tuesday. If not, if you haven't gotten it by the following Saturday, please let me know. And if you haven't gotten anything from me, please let me know. There's an email address right here in the bottom. Just tell your mom, I haven't received anything from Pastor Sumi. So either my address is wrong or I haven't received your address. Whatever it may be, guys, please email me. It's so important. I want to reach out to you. I want to make sure you guys get the materials I send you. So please um, tell your mom and dad and they can cacao me or they can email me. All right, so today's message, we're going to get ready. It's about how Jesus was being arrested, right? So Jesus was questioned, and we had the Last Supper. So we're going to go over that, but let's open up our Bible today. I have the NIV. So let's open up our Bible to Matthew, which is the first book of the New Testament. And I know my fourth graders, you guys are doing such a great job of having your Bibles ready. I can tell that, you know, you guys are smart kids and you are ready to worship God and read the Bible together with me, which I really love. I wish I can see it every Sunday at Kids too, but hopefully we'll be able to get back to church. Um, so Matthew, let's open up with Matthew chapter 26 and re verses 35 to 56. So let's have our... Um, page ready here and then let's do a review of last week's message so last week's message was about the last supper and how the last supper was in preparation for what jesus will do for you and me and it's about how jesus really gave his life to us and that the last supper was showing us that the bread and the wine that they used was a symbol of what jesus did on the cross for us giving his body, right, and his, um, and dying for us on the cross was a symbol of the Last Supper, which was also a connection to the Passover, right, because the families that were, um, had the red stain on their door, they were saved from having their child to die. So again, that was such a, a connection from the Old Testament to the New Testament of the Passover to the Last Supper, that this was God's plan to prepare everyone that he had a solution from Adam and Eve that he was going to correct it all by sending his son Jesus, right, to die for us. And we talked about what humility is because Jesus didn't have to do that. He didn't have to 
die on the cross for us, but he did it because he loved us. And we went over what humility is. And it's basically showing that, you know, that you don't think yourself that you are better than anyone else. And here Jesus is God. And he's still saying that I'm going to come down from the heavens in my wonderful home. And I'm going to come down to earth and live a sinless life and yet i will come and save you guys and he did that because he didn't say nope i don't care you guys deserve to be punished he didn't do that because he didn't say you know what you guys deserve it and i'm just better off without you guys because i'm better than you guys no jesus humbled himself came as a baby and also lived a sinless life right and obey god even though it was hard and we're going to talk about how hard it was today and what he had to do to prepare himself to be ready to die for us on the cross right so we talked about that that he left his throne and he came humbly to earth right and that you know for us too that you know, to be humble is we need the Holy Spirit. We can't do it on our own. I know I have a younger sister and we used to fight a lot. And there's times I just thought I was better than her. There's times she thought she was better than me. And we would be prideful and we weren't humble. But, you know, through Jesus and through the Holy Spirit, we're able to forgive each other and know that I'm a sinner and she's a sinner. And we had to forgive each other. But it took time. It's not overnight. And we needed the Holy Spirit. We needed God's Spirit to help us. And it's the same for you guys. Guys, you know we can be good at certain things but when we think we're better than others that's when pride comes in right and pride also comes when we just think we know what's better for our lives rather than trusting God right that we know what the right thing to do and we don't need God's help but humility means we need God's help and the week before that we talked about wisdom that wisdom is humility that you need to ask God for wisdom and when you ask God for wisdom you're actually being very humble about it saying I'm not sure what the right way of seeing this problem is or I'm not sure why all these bad things are happening but help me Lord to understand and trust in you and that's a humble person right so here is our Bible verse for this season so let's go over that together he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death even to death on a cross Philippians chapter 2 verse 8 here Jesus is talking about how he humbled himself and he was obedient. Now obedience is hard, guys. And here Jesus, he was humbled to obey God by saying, okay, I will die on the cross. And you know, because he was fully God and he was fully man, he felt pain. He was able to feel pain and he was able to feel the struggle that you and I go through, right? So he was understanding how hard it is so that when we say, God, it's hard to obey you sometimes. I want to do things my way. And that's when we need the Holy Spirit to say, God, help me to obey you. Holy Spirit is our guide, our counselor, counselor, and he fills us and he empowers us and he helps us through each day. And all we need to do is to ask and you shall receive, seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be open to you. And that's for wisdom and that is for the Holy Spirit. Well, today we're going to talk about how Jesus is knowing after the Last Supper, he's preparing them that I will not be with you and that I'm going to go through suffering. And here Jesus is praying for what's to come. So let's read that together. Let's read um, Matthew chapter 26, verse 36 to 46. Make sure you guys have your sermon notes ready. Place it right next to you so you can take notes. You can pause the video and write it down if I'm rushing or you can just watch and take notes as you are going through it or even after just fresh off your mind you can go through that and then we also have our discussion notes as well to answer specific questions about this message and if you're not sure I left an answer key if that is correct and I try to do it without the answer key but um, the answer key does help so do as you may but you know do your sermon notes and try to fill it as much as you can once we get back to church make sure you collect them put them in a binder or back in the envelope whatever it be with your name on it because I would love to read them so let's read Matthew chapter 26 verse 36 to 46 so let's read that and here Jesus is praying Jesus is praying at Gethsemane right 
So it's in a garden. So let's read that together. Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to them, sit here while I, I go over there and pray. And he took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him. And he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Verse 39, going a little farther, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken away from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. Let, now let's pause there. Here, Jesus knows that um, he's going to be arrested. He knows that he's getting ready to die for you and me. But he is sorrowful. He is troubled. He actually is saying, I kind of don't want to do this. So when it says, take this cup away, it's like, take, the, take this job or take this burden or this obedience away. But if this is your will, God, I will obey. Help me to obey. But he's praying for help, guys. See, a lot of times, you guys, we try to do things on our own. And here Jesus is showing that even he himself can't do it on his own. Even though he's fully God, he was fully man, and he felt pain in his heart. And maybe he was scared. Maybe he was overwhelmed. Whatever it may be, he understands when you go through hardships, when you're scared. Now, I hope you guys know those moments because a lot of times we want to avoid them. We rather watch TV. We rather play with our friends. We rather play tons of video games so that we don't feel any sadness or pain or struggle. But here Jesus didn't have any of those things, so he couldn't avoid it. So he went to God for help. He went to God and he prayed on his knees. He even asked for his friends to come along to, be, to watch over him, to protect him, to just be there for him, right? So that he's not alone. And so let's continue what happens. Verse uh, 40. Then he returned to his disciples and he found them sleeping. So his friends ended up sleeping. Could you men not keep watch with me for one hour? Couldn't you just be with me for one hour? He asked Peter. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the body is weak. And here Jesus is giving them understanding that, you know, I'm sad that you couldn't be with me and watch over me while I'm praying because you ended up falling asleep. And, you know, our body is weak, even though our spirit is willing. And Jesus knows that we also need God's help to obey him. Verse 42, he went away a second time. So again, he goes and prays again. My father, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away, unless I drink it, may your will be done. Again, he's asking God for help. Not just once, but twice. He's saying, please, if this is your will, will give me the strength to do this. If not, please take it away. Right? In verse 43, when he came back again, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. So he left them and went away once more and prayed the third time, saying the same thing. Verse 45, then he returned to disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the hour is near, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. So here Jesus knows he's going to be betrayed. So he prayed three times because he needed to be prepared for his friends betraying him, for the pain that he's going to um, go through once he's arrested, right? He, they punish him. They whip him. So we're going to talk about that. You know, he goes through so much hardship and then he's on the cross, right? So what happens? The betrayer happens with, remember from last week, um, Jesus talks about how Judas will betray him, and that happens. Verse 47 to 50, let's read that. And while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd armed with swords and clubs sent from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had arranged a signal with them. The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him. And going at once to Jesus, Judas said, Greetings, Rabbi. And he kissed him. 
And Jesus replied, friend, do what you came for. Well, even when um, a Judas is going to betray him. Now, kiss means like when we greet each other, every culture is different. Sometimes we hug each other to say hi. Sometimes we just wave hi. But some cultures, they, they give a cheek um, kiss on the cheeks, like in the French culture or even the Spanish culture. And that's just a sign of greeting. And here he's saying that I am going to greet the one that, that uh, you are looking for, right? The Roman soldiers are looking for. And so he does that, and Jesus still calls him a friend. Friend, do what you came for. And the, then, verse 50, Then the men stepped forward, seized Jesus, and arrested him. With that, one of Jesus' companions reached for his sword and drew it out and struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his ear. It's cutting off his ear. So another one of the disciples, you know, thought he can fight the soldiers. He you know, cut someone's ear off. Wow, that sounds painful. And Jesus went over to that Roman soldier and he healed him and saying, no, we're not going to fight this. We're going to trust God. You know, sometimes we really want to do things our way. When things feel so unfair, we just want to do it the way we want to do. But here Jesus says, we're going to depend on God. And here in those moments, you guys, when we want to do things our way, take a pause, take a moment and pray. You know, when there's times where you got in trouble by your parents, rather than just hiding or being scared, take a moment and pray and say, Jesus, I know I did something wrong, but please let your, my, my mom and dad be gracious to me, you know, and, or give me the strength to face my punishment, you know, whatever it may be. Um, and it might be just taking away your, um, you know, uh, taking away your video games or not spending time with your friends. And in that sense, it's okay. So we just have to deal with that. But, you know, pray. Pray if you are scared and there's times where you don't know what's going to happen. Rather than trying to do things your way, just like what the disciples did, Jesus says, let's go to God with it. Right? So let's see what happens now. Verse 51 to 56. With that, one of Jesus' companions reached for his sword drew it out and struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Verse 52, put your sword back in its place, Jesus said to him, for all who draw the sword will die by the sword. Do you think I cannot call on my father? And he will at once put at my disposal more than 12 legions of angels. But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled that say it must happen in this way? In verse 55, at that time, Jesus said to the crowd, Am I leading a rebellion that you have come out with swords and clubs to capture me? Every day I sat in the temple courts teaching and you did not arrest me. But this has all ha taken place that the writings of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all disciples deserted him and fled so jesus said we're not going to fight here that is not god's plan you know it's been talked about in the old testament with all the prophecies and we're going to obey god and trust god and after that when they were resting jesus disciples were scared and they just flee they just fled they ran away and they hid from the soldiers they hid from the soldiers now in this story Guys, you see that um, Jesus is trusting God and he's following God's plan, right? That he follows God's plan to bring salvation to the world. You know, when we trust in Jesus in the hardships, good times and the bad times, he will guide your path. When I look at my uh, life um, and I see all the good times and the hard times, and the times I trusted God, he really made my path straight according to his way. Now, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't easy, but he gave me the strength to walk through it. But through it, he did bless me. He gave me the strength to handle many things, to have hope and to have faith, right? To have faith in God. Now, we talked about having um, prayer times, you know. So during this time, guys, even though we don't get to see each other at church and we don't get to pray together as church, I hope you guys are praying at home. And there's so much to pray for. One is to pray for your schools that hopefully they'll open up and churches will open up and that this virus will definitely decrease or that the vaccine will be done well made, right? And second, guys, 
pray for other countries. During this time, there has been lots of persecution for Christian people, right? And I'm actually going to show you guys a video after this of what's been happening. There's an organization that helps and that wants to let people know all the countries where Christians are being persecuted. You and I have a freedom to worship God, to praise God, to have a Bible, but there's so many countries where if they caught us, we would all be in jail or we'll be punished. Just the way Jesus was being punished, we'll be punished, right? So let's pray for that. And as you know, elections coming up and let's pray for our parents, our country, that God will be the leader of this country, not the president, but that God will. And whether you like a person or not, we got to trust God. You know, God has used many different kinds of leaders in the Old Testament, whether people like them or didn't like them, whether they're good or bad, God used them according to his will and his plan. And, you know, during this time, rather than just pinpointing that person, guys, we need to pray that God will be the center of our country, of USA, that when God is the center of a country, it does become blessed. God blesses that country. So let's pray for that and let's um, watch this clip, but let's spend a few minutes right now in prayer for all these things. So I want you guys to have a few minutes of silence while well, we're being silent, that you'll be praying as I'm praying silently. And then I will close. Dear Jesus, we just um, want to pray for our country, that you would uh, guide all the people voting and that the right person will be on on the president um, position, Lord. And I pray that you give us wisdom and understanding the government and your view on it so that we can be wise as we grow up in this country. Father, we also pray for all the persecuted countries, the ones that are um, being um, abused and being tortured for their faith. God, we're so blessed in America that we have the freedom of worship. And we just pray, Lord God, that you would save these countries and through their persecution, that many more Christians will be saved, God, that miracles will happen, Lord. We also pray for our schools and our churches, that they will open up, that this virus will really decrease, God, that the vaccines that will be made will be made well, Lord God, that you will guide the doctors, the nurses, the scientists, and all the leaders, Lord God, to make the right one. Let your hand be upon it, Lord, so that we can move forward and move on, Lord Jesus. And we just pray for our families that during this time we depend on you and trust in you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So let's watch these two video clips. One is about the message, and the second is about the persecuted churches around the world, all the Christians. And I hope you guys pray for them during the week. Jesus came with his disciples to a garden called Gethsemane. He said to them, Sit here while I go over there and pray. Jesus took three of his disciples into the garden, and Jesus became very sad and troubled. Jesus told the three disciples to stay there, and he went a little farther. Jesus fell face down and prayed, Father, if it is possible, spare me from this, but I want to do your plan. Jesus came back and found the three disciples asleep. He asked Peter, couldn't you stay awake with me for one hour? Jesus went away and prayed a second time. Then he found his disciples sleeping again. He said, are you still asleep? Get up for it is almost time someone is going to betray me. Suddenly, Judas arrived with a large crowd carrying swords and clubs. Judas kissed Jesus so the crowd would know which man was Jesus. The men grabbed Jesus and arrested him. Peter pulled out his sword to fight the man, but Jesus told Peter to put away his sword. Jesus said, isn't this what God planned all along? Jesus' followers ran away, but Peter stayed nearby to watch. The men who arrested Jesus led him to the house of Caiaphas, the high priest. The religious leaders wanted a reason to kill Jesus, but they couldn't find one. The high priest asked, Do you have anything to say? Are you the Messiah, the Son of God? Jesus replied, Yes, that's right. The high priest said, Aha! He has spoken against God. Caiaphas and the religious leaders did not want to believe that Jesus is God's Son. 
They said Jesus was lying, but Jesus was telling the truth. The crowd said, he deserves to die. They spit in Jesus' face and hit him. A servant saw Peter and asked, aren't you one of Jesus' disciples? No, I'm not, Peter said. Twice more, as Peter watched what was happening to Jesus, someone asked him if he was a follower of Jesus. Peter lied. No, he said, I don't even know him. The next morning, the religious leaders decided how they would kill Jesus. Then they took him to Pilate, the governor. Jesus knew that his death was God's plan to save people from sin. Jesus' friends turned against him and he was arrested and put on trial. But Jesus followed his father's plan in order to bring salvation to the world. Around the world, the body of Christ is under attack. A congregation forced out in Algeria. Bibles burned in southern India. A Christian's home destroyed in Vietnam. And in China, an unregistered church is demolished. Just in the top 50 countries on the 2020 World Watch List, so many Christians are beaten, attacked, tormented, and killed for their faith in Jesus. In fact, right now, more than 260 million Christians live in areas of high persecution. That's one in eight Christians worldwide. Each year, the World Watch List tracks persecution against Christians around the world to help us understand what's happening in the global church and how we can pray and support our suffering family. As I stand here in China, I can tell you that behind the numbers is a story that challenges and inspires my faith. China is number 23 on this year's World Watch List, but that number doesn't tell the whole story. I wanted to find out the truth behind the ranking. I've been all over China, and I can tell you that it's an incredible country with breathtaking beauty, an amazing culture, and a history second to none. But the church here tells a different story. Christians are increasingly being pushed underground in China. Pastors are being detained. Churches are being closed. And people who have a personal faith in Jesus are being watched using technology that was never available before. The church is being squeezed in China. But sometimes when the church is squeezed, it grows. And China is just one country on the 2020 World Watch List. Christians around the world are being pressured, targeted, and attacked. The Christians in the top 50 countries on this year's list may be suffering, but we can stand with them in prayer and support. We invite you to join us in 2020 as we stand with our sisters and brothers around the world. Open Doors is serving in over 60 countries around the world, standing with the persecuted church. We'd love for you to join us. We are one church, one family. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that and learned something new, especially about other countries. And I will see you guys this coming Saturday on our Zoom party at 6 o'clock. So I hope to see you guys there. Take a photo of your costume. We'd love to have that on. And um, I'll see you guys then. Have a great week. And I'll be praying for you and praying for our country and the world. Bye.